today's video, I'd just like to do one additional example of a trig identity that we can prove with the other identities that we've learned so far in class. As well, I'd like to show you some additional commands you can use on the TI-83 to prove different identities with technology. So using pencil and paper, we can prove this identity by breaking it up into the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equal sign. And as I suggested in class, anytime I see a tangent or a cotangent, I convert it into sine and cosine using the quotient identity. I'm going to distribute into the brackets the sine x cos x term. So I'll have sine squared x times cos x over cos x minus sine x cos squared x over sine x. Now there's terms that I can cancel. Cosine in the numerator and the denominator of the first term can cancel. The sine over the numerator in the numerator and denominator of the second term can cancel. So I'm left with sine squared x minus cos squared x Using the Pythagorean identity, sine squared x becomes 1 minus cos squared x. And then I can group my like terms together. I have two cos squared x terms. And now my left side equals my right side. Okay, so we proved this algebraically, but the question is asking us to prove this using technology. So on the graph and calculator, we can graph the left-hand side. So I want to make sure when I put this on the graph and calculator, I do it correctly. So my first function, or my left-hand side, was 1 minus 2 times the cosine of x squared. Okay, notice how I put that function in the graph and calculator. The convention for writing cosine of x squared is cos squared x like this, which means the same thing as cosine of x all squared, but it's not the same thing as the cosine of x squared. Okay, so make sure we're using brackets properly when we're putting this in. My next function is sine x times cos x times the tangent of x minus the cotangent of x. Now, we don't have a cotangent function on the graph and calculator, but I can put this in as 1 divided by the tangent of x since, this, since the cotangent is the reciprocal function. One last thing, I'm going to change my line style to a heavy line so I can see the graph when it's drawn. Make sure my window's OK. Make sure I'm in radian mode. When I graph this, there's my left-hand side being graphed. And my right-hand side. And I can see that it's overlapping this function nicely. there's no deviation, we know this identity is true for all x values. So again, we can state that the left-hand side 
equals the right hand side. Okay, a couple points that I'd like to make about the graphing calculator. If you right click on the graphing calculator, you can do something called take a screenshot. We can put a copy of the LCD display onto our clipboard, which means if I was, say, working on an assignment, I can paste the image directly into my assignment in Word or the word processor of my choice. I can resize the image, rotate it, etc., etc., etc. So again, let's say I need to work on an assignment and I need to take my window settings and show them to my teacher. I can right click on the window settings, take a screenshot, and I'll put the screenshot, maybe I want the whole calculator image on a clipboard, and then in my assignment, I can paste the image. Okay, and there I have my image of my calculator with the window settings. I can resize it if I need to, move it around, etc., etc. Okay, so two things from this video. Graphing our trig identities to show that the left-hand side and the right-hand side overlap. And then right-clicking on the graphing calculator to take a screenshot, put it on the clipboard, and paste it into whatever word processor we're using. Okay, we're going to do more uh, trig identity practice in class tomorrow, so bring any questions you have to me. Thanks for watching.